Okay, now we're actually going to use some geometry. Okay, so we're given a circle and there's a center, but we don't know the coordinates of the center, we don't know the radius either. Okay, all we're given are two distinct points that lie on the circumference, P and Q. Okay, so in order for us to find the coordinates of the center of the circle, and hence the radius, and be able to write down the equation of the circle, we're going to have to find the equation of the line that joins P and Q first. Okay, so the line for P and Q. So M, the gradient, is going to be the difference in the y's. So 3 take away minus 1 and the difference in the x's. So minus 3 take away minus 1. So we're getting 4 on the top okay, and minus 2 on the bottom. So 4 over minus 2 is minus 2. So the actual equation is y is equal to minus 2x plus c. We don't know what that c is. Okay, so let's substitute in q, minus 1, minus 1, because that would be the easiest one. So y is minus 1, x is minus 1, so we get two, minus 2 times minus 1 is 2, plus c. So c must be equal to minus 3. So the actual equation of the line that joins p and q is minus 2x, minus 3. Okay? Now, what we need is to find the perpendicular bisector of the line PQ. Okay, and in order, that will tell us where C is. Now, for in order for us to do this, we need to find the coordinates of M, the midpoint. So the midpoint is the average of the x values of the p and q and the average of the y values. So minus 3 and minus 1 is minus 4, half of minus 4 is minus 2. Sometimes this can be done by inspection, but I'll make sure it's rigorous. rigorous. 3 and minus 1 is, one, is 2, half of 2 is 1. So m has coordinates minus 2, 1. So now, to make the line passing through M to C, okay, we need to use the negative reciprocal of the gradient. So Y is actually equal to one half of X, okay, because the negative reciprocal of minus two is a half, plus the intercept K. Now, as you can see, the intercept of this straight line is the exactly the coordinate of C, okay, which is what I want. So I'm going to have to substitute in minus 2, 1. So y is 1, x is minus 2, so I get minus 1 plus k. So k must be equal to 2. So the perpendicular bisector MC is equal to, is y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. So, in other words, what I can straightway see is that the coordinates of C, okay, if I put in x is 0 into this, so y is 2. Okay, so the actual coordinates of the center is 0, 2. So I can actually draw that. Now, how do I actually find the radius? Now, that's a bit more of an interesting problem. In order for us to find the radius, what you need is the distance between C to Q or C to P. Okay, so we're going to have to use Pythagoras' theorem. So I'm going to look at the distance between C and Q. So I'll just write down the coordinates of Q so that we've got them here minus 1, minus 1 okay 
So it's the difference in the y's. So let's do minus one. Well, the difference in the x's. We'll do that one first. Minus one, take away zero. Okay, which we square. And the difference in the y's. Minus one, take away two, squared. And the answer will be the square root of that. Okay, through Pythagoras. So minus one take away zero or squared is one. Minus one take away two is minus three. Square that is nine. So we get one plus nine is ten. So that's the square root of ten. So that is the radius. So we've got the center, we've got the radius. All we need to do now is write down the equation of the circle. So that's x, take away 0, all squared, so I can just write x squared, plus y, take away 2, all squared, is equal to the radius squared. So it's equal to 10. And so just by looking at two distinct points on the circle, we were able to find the equation of the circle. Now remember, this only worked because C, we knew, was actually on the y-axis. Okay, If, on the other hand, you, C was not on the y-axis, this method alone wouldn't have worked. For that, you would need three distinct points. Okay? And there may well be a video of that coming later.